In October of 2024, NASA is going to launch the flagship mission to end all missions. Europa Clipper is a blockbuster project, a $5 billion probe that is going to fly to Jupiter and get up close and personal with its moon Europa. A moon that, beneath its icy shell, contains a vast ocean of water. An ocean that may be home to microbial life. Now, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, or just a bit of a massive space nerd, you're doubtless already excited about this. Now, we covered Clipper in depth back in September, and hype has been building in the space community for years. But Europa Clipper isn't the only major mission to an ocean moon coming up this decade, nor is it the only probe going to Jupiter, nor the only one that might discover extraterrestrial life. There's also JUICE. An acronym of Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, JUICE is the European Space Agency's answer to Clipper, a big, expensive craft that will blast off at Jupiter in April 2023. A craft with a simple yet magnificent mission to explore strange new worlds and seek out new life on the lesser-studied moons of Ganymede and Callisto. A mission that may just boldly take us where humanity has never been before. For most of its existence, the European Space Agency, or ESA, has played second fiddle to the much bigger and much better funded NASA. While it has launched its own missions, including the Rosetta Comet probe, the ESA's strength has long been its ability to collaborate with others. Their scientists worked with NASA on the James Webb Space Telescope and the Cassini-Huygens probe to Saturn, for example, and they're currently working with Japan's JAXA on the Bepi Colombo mission to Mercury. But just as JAXA has recently started flexing its muscle on big projects, so too has the ESA started aiming higher at some truly flashy solo missions. The flashiest of all? Juice. Developed under the Cosmic Vision program, JUICE is the flagship of a new class of ESA missions, ones dedicated to discovering and examining habitats that may be suitable for life. In JUICE's case, those habitats are three of Jupiter's moons, three worlds within our solar system that scientists believe could well hold all the ingredients necessary for life. So, in order to get the most out of this video, let's quickly get to know them, shall we? Orbiting Jupiter, an average of 778 million kilometers from the Sun, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto together make up three quarters of what are known as the Galilean moons, natural satellites of Jupiter discovered by Galileo back in 1610. The reason Galileo was able to spot them with his primitive telescope is that they're unusually big. Callisto is one of the biggest moons in the solar system, while Ganymede is even bigger than the planet Mercury. But the ESA doesn't just want to go explore them because they're big and doing space stuff is fun, but because scientists believe they all have subsurface oceans of liquid water. In astrobiology, water's a pretty big deal. Here on Earth, we find life wherever there is water. That would suggest that water is one of the key things required for life forms to evolve, along with an energy source and the right mix of chemicals. In the case of the Galilean moons, excluding poor old ugly stepsister Io, Europa and Ganymede both have confirmed oceans of H2O, while Callisto is suspected to have one. They also have an energy source. As the moons circle around Jupiter, their gravity interacts, creating a kind of cosmic tug of war between them. This generates heat through friction, leading to geological activity and likely to hydrothermal vents on the floors of their oceans. And where we find hydrothermal vents on Earth, we tend to find microbial life. For these reasons, extremely clever dudes and dudettes had long wondered if the three might have habitable environments below their icy surfaces. But it was only when we got data back from the Galileo probe that we started to understand just how promising these moons might be. Europa seems to contain a salty ocean so deep it holds more water than all of Earth's oceans combined. Not only that, but it seems to have plumes, great jets of water that eject out from the surface and may contain material from that lightless ocean. Material that may just hold evidence for organic processes occurring below the surface. So yeah. It's easy to see why NASA is splurging $5 billion to send Clipper to investigate. Should evidence be uncovered of microbial alien life, it would be the science event of the century. But while Juice would also drop in on Europa, the European team are, ironically, far more interested in the Moon's sisters. Like Europa, Ganymede is thought to have an ocean that would dwarf all those on Earth. Unlike its sibling, though, it also has something utterly unique for a moon 
its own intrinsic magnetic field that instantly makes it one of the most interesting places in the solar system and a key target for juice and it's not alone the most remote of Jupiter's major satellites, Callisto, is also the least affected by the giant planet's radiation. That could be interesting if Juice is able to confirm its theorized ocean. An ocean which may be up to 200 kilometers deep, far deeper than the deepest ocean point on Earth, by the way. These, then, are the key questions the ESA's probe is designed to answer. Questions about the existence and composition of the three oceans, the source of Ganymede's magnetic field, and the possibility that life may have evolved here separate to our own. It's a tall order, a collection of some of the wildest and most interesting mysteries in current planetary science. Luckily, the craft they've designed is more than up to the job. One of the big reasons the ESA decided to create a solo Jupiter mission is that no one else uh, would do the project with them. Originally, the plan was for the ESA to work under NASA on a craft for exploring all of Jupiter's icy moons in depth, the Europa Jupiter System mission. But then the post financial crash era of austerity and Titan belts set in, and it became clear that NASA just didn't have the funding for anything so dramatic. So the agencies parted ways. NASA went off to create the cheaper mission focused solely on Europa, while the ESA turned their attention to launching a large class mission all on their own. You only have to glance at the specs of the craft to see why the Europeans were determined to spend their money well. The official ESA line is that, quote, Juice will carry the most powerful remote sensing, geophysical, and in situ payload complement ever flown to the outer solar system. Now, we'll leave it up to the experts to decide whether that's true or not, but there's no doubt that the probe is hauling some serious kit within its 2,400 kilogram frame. Some of the most serious of all is the stuff used for detecting and examining subsurface oceans. RIME, for example, is Juice's Radar for Icy Moons Exploration, the device designed to penetrate the shell of each moon to a depth of 9 kilometers. Now, that may not be enough to get a look at their hidden seas. While Europa may have ice as thin as 5 kilometers in some areas, any liquid water on Ganymede or Callisto is thought to be buried much deeper. Still, RIME should give us our first look at the innards of these worlds, a first look that others, like 3GM, will quickly build upon. Designed to measure gravitational fields, 3GM will be able to use its data to infer a lot about the composition of Jupiter's moons. It may even prove one of the weirdest theories about Ganymede that it's not just one ocean, but three, stacked atop one another and separated by ice. Again, this is an instrument designed to be complemented by others, not to just solo figure out the ocean question. And it's here that JMAG comes in. By far the most visually distinctive instrument on Juice, JMAG is the giant boom that sticks out of the craft, a staggering 10.6 meters, or what those who prefer old school units would call nearly 35 feet. A magnetometer, JMAG's main mission is to study the shit out of Ganymede's odd magnetic fields, and not just because scientists are curious about what's causing it. It's thanks to complex magnetic field measurements, you see, that we even know Ganymede has an ocean. By studying it in even greater detail, we should be able to get a better idea about the sea's depth and extent. Unfortunately, magnetic fields also carry an intense load of radiation, intense enough to fry the electronics in a really expensive probe. Especially when that magnetosphere is as large as Jupiter's. For this reason, one of the key, if unsexy, aspects of building Juice has been figuring out how to keep all of the equipment functioning throughout its mission. In JMAG's case, that means encasing its electronics in lead. For the craft itself, it means heavy chunks of aluminium shielding, hiding the most sensitive stuff. Still, the team are taking no chances. The entire time it's at Jupiter, the probe will avoid dropping below Europa's orbit, thereby keeping it outside the main radiation belt. And speaking of Europa, it's here that things get really cool. PEP has the potential to be the most groundbreaking instrument Juice is carrying. Standing for Particle Environment Package, its official job description is all about finding out what the plasma environment is like around Planet 5. But what makes it exciting to us laymen is that it does this by sampling particles that have been scraped off the moon's surfaces or expelled from their interiors. In Europa's case, that may well include particles once found in those plumes of water. Plumes that, as we mentioned earlier, may contain biosignatures. If we're extremely lucky, like winning the lottery whilst tripping over lost pirate gold star lucky, Pep may just get a nose full of Europa particles that show organic processes happening below the surface. The first tantalizing signs, in other words, of life. 
But even if this doesn't happen, and it is fairly unlikely, that doesn't mean Juice won't still perform some awesome science. In fact, we've only just begun to scratch the surface. The first thing you notice oh, when seeing a picture of Juice is just how massive its solar panels are. Two huge, ungainly things jutting wildly out of the side like the outstretched arms of the child catcher from Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Well, the reason they're so monstrous is that out by Jupiter, the sun is far dimmer than here on Earth. Something like 30 times less light reaches Planet 5, which means that the solar array has to clock in at a monstrous 85 square meters to keep Juice running. That's over 900 square feet. Likewise, the antenna that's going to transmit all of the probe's data back to Earth is gargantuan, three meters in diameter, and stuck to the front like an oversized dinner plate. As it flies, this antenna will actually be conducting its own experiment. Pride is not just the creepiest villain in FMA Brotherhood, but also the planetary radio interferometer and Doppler experiment, which will use signals sent between the craft and Earth to investigate Jupiter's gravity field. All of which neatly takes us to Juice's secondary function, using its funky instruments to explore Jupiter itself. Of these, the funkiest are probably Magis and SWI. Standing for the Moon's and Jupiter Imaging Spectrometer and the Submillimeter Wave Instrument, their whole deal is that they will together investigate Jupiter's atmosphere. That means examining the structure of the vast clouds that swirl around the gas giants. It means trying to understand what drives the dynamics of this weird and hostile world, a place of howling winds and storms that rage for centuries. As they do their thing, UVS will likewise be exploring Jupiter's upper reaches, but it won't be focusing on clouds. A UV imaging spectrograph, UVS is primarily interested in Jupiter's aurora, those trippy lights that flicker around the planet's poles and are great for admiring while baked. And then you have Janus. The camera system on Juice, Janus is the part that all us non-specialist space nerds will get most excited by. The bit that'll send back a steady stream of mind-blowing pictures. And we really mean mind-blowing. The resolution on Janus is going to be so good that it'll map Jupiter's clouds to a resolution of 10 kilometers. But it's with the moons where it's really going to shine. After this mission is over, we should have a detailed surface map of Ganymede that goes down to a resolution of just 2.4 meters. That's practically close enough to see any space cowboys down there waving back at us. And nor is this the end of the instruments that Juice is rocking. Rounding out the set, a gala, which will map the topography of the moons, and RPWI, which will investigate radio emissions around Jupiter. That's 10 cutting edge instruments in all. 10 instruments that will push current planetary science to its absolute breaking point. Amusingly, that cutting edgeness doesn't extend to how they were built. In the depths of the COVID pandemic, some of the engineers were forced to work from home to hit launch deadlines while not breaking lockdown laws. The result was the JMAG team constructing parts of their instruments while sat at their kitchen tables. Team leader Michelle Doherty summed it up politely to BBC Science Focus magazine by saying, Building an instrument is always stressful, but the pandemic took that stress to the next level. If there were rewards for a remarkable understatement, we have a feeling Doherty would win hands down. At this stage, though, we're still just talking about the technical side, the craft that will do the mission rather than the mission itself. Well, it's time for that to change. Time to mentally roll our probe out onto the launch pad and blast it off to the stars. At some point between the 5th and 25th of April 2023, an Ariane 5 rocket will fire its engines on a launch pad in French Guiana and blast off into the sky. For the Ariane 5 series, this will be a bittersweet ending. The rocket is being discontinued after this launch to be replaced with a newer model. But for the Juice probe, this historic liftoff will only be the beginning. And that's because the craft won't just jump into the sky, point itself at Jupiter, and go wheeling off into the darkness on a simple, direct voyage. Rather, the probe will spend the next few years undergoing a complex series of flybys and gravity assists designed to boost its speed for the journey. The first of these gravity assists will also be a world first. In August 2024, the craft will fly by not just our moon, but also the Earth, performing something known as a lunar Earth gravity assist. This means picking up an additional boost from both our planet and our satellite, a maneuver that should wildly save on propellants. Not that it alone will be enough. August 2025 should see a flyby of Venus, followed by a return to Earth for additional boosts in 2026 and 2029. Finally, in early 2031, Juice will begin its journey into the Jovian system, firing up its instruments six months ahead of arrival to start taking readings to prepare for the final flyby. 
In the summer of 2031, the craft will have its first encounter with Ganymede, the largest of Jupiter's moons. This will help swing Juice into orbit around the king of planets itself, at which point the science is going to begin. Over the next four years, the probe will zoom around the Jovian system, conducting multiple flybys of all three icy moons. Of these, the least visited will be Europa, with just two scheduled flybys for July of 2032. Flybys that would involve hunting for subsurface water pockets and plumes of vapor, while also examining particles in the moon's extremely thin atmosphere. Given that Europa is thought to be the most likely Jovian moon to boast life, two flybys might sound like a bit of a waste, a small payoff for an expensive mission. But that's only because staying at Europa would be redundant. By the time Juice arrives, NASA's Europa Clipper will already be turning its full attention onto this mysterious world, the beginning of a process that will include nearly 50 separate flybys. All of which means Juice can be freed up to visit other places. Places we've always never visited before. From 2032 to 2034, Callisto will be targeted for 12 flybys, the first time a craft has visited the moon since the Galileo probe in 2001. While the focus will be figuring out if this ancient, pockmarked world has a hidden ocean, the reasons for visiting are also practical. Using Callisto's gravity, Juice should be able to shift its orbit higher, allowing the craft to get a good look at Jupiter's North Pole and their strange auroras. Still, for all Juice may explore Callisto and Jupiter, the real target of the mission is also the biggest moon of all, Ganymede. Over the course of its mission, the craft will swing past this monster satellite 12 separate times. That done, in December 2034, it will begin its last stage, orbiting Ganymede. This will be the first time a human craft has ever orbited a moon other than our own. For eight whole months, the juice will be loose in the skies over Ganymede. And what it will discover there could change everything. Now, for normies like us, the data we get back about Ganymede's subsurface ocean will be the stuff of dreams. Confirmation of its existence and composition, and maybe even indicators about its ability to support life. For the higher level geeks, though, it'll be the exploration of the magnetosphere, or which is most rewarding, as Juice teases out the secrets of this attribute unique among all our solar system moons. Finally, in late 2035, the Juice mission will come to an end. Short of propellant, the craft will be redirected out of orbit, pointed at the surface of Ganymede, and then crashed into it at hundreds of kilometers an hour. As it descends, it will beam back its final readings, the last discoveries it makes on its fantastic voyage. And then there will be a distant impact, a spray of debris, and juice will be no more. By then, though, it will have delivered on its promise a thousand times over. As we often do with the space videos, this ending section might make a good point to really reflect on what the future holds, on what ingenuity we humans at our best could truly be capable of. Not so very long ago, the Jovian system was relatively little studied. Oh, while we'd visited Jupiter itself multiple times, its moons were still mysterious, still ignored by too many people. What well, anymore? Within the next couple of years, two great missions are set to blast off with no other goal than to understand these natural satellites, to explore them with the same eagerness and attention that oh, we currently shower on Mars, to really solve their mysteries. Were these the only goals of Clipper and Juice, that would be enough for us to make a video about them, but this is only the beginning. As we've mentioned several times now, there's a chance that these two missions together may uncover something game-changing. The first hints at life beyond our Earth, locked away in an alien ocean. That's unlikely that Juice will find definitive proof either way, but even if it just finds some basic markers, even if it simply lays the groundwork for more conclusive future missions, well, that would still be a remarkable human achievement, one that would go down in history as one of the greatest space missions ever undertaken.